Hello and welcome to this presentation. My name is Raymond and today I'll be presenting on behalf of MindCube the software requirements specifications for MESA Maps. Before I begin, allow me to introduce you to the staff of MindCube. I'm the team leader and Jing Long, Kai Hian and James forms our development team and Pio and Ryan will handle all the administration aspects of the projects. So here is a brief introduction to Mesa Map Robot System. The aim of the system is to develop a robot mapping system that is able to map up survey terrains, <coughs> determine survey boundaries, locate deposits and features of the terrain, operate manually and autonomously, handle and store new information, as well as to load previous existing data into the robot. <coughs> to accomplish this, we have decided to develop a prototype that will allow us to replicate the MESA map robot and test our system. Uh, allow me to elaborate. We have replaced MESA maps robot with LEGO Mindstorms EV3. This allows up to comprehensively test our system functions on a fully operational robot, so as to allow us to check our objectives. To complement the robot is actually a graphical user interface that will be presented to MESA Maps upon the completion of this project. So some other specifications to point out will be the mock-up terrain that will stimulate the actual terrain where the MESA Map robot will operate. Below, here are some of the features of the terrain. So at the end of the day, our robot will be able to locate colored circles within the boundary, locate colored circles on the boundary, avoid shaded areas marked in the graphical user interface, avoid external objects or barriers around the boundary, respond to commands from the operator via the software. While our graphical user interface should be able to control and maneuver the robot, it also allows the operator to attain robot location information have a visual representation of map and unmapped areas of the terrain and as well as to indicate the special features within the terrain. Some additional information of the product will be as follows. There are two users of the systems, namely the operator and the person which is the person controlling the robot as well as the administrator. The operating environment for the system will be a Java runtime environment 1.7 or above, as well as a communication system between the robot and operator, which will be either a Bluetooth or a wireless network. Some constraints to bear in mind are <coughs> that the development has to be done in Java due to the Lagos firmware being an embedded version in J Java Virtual Machine. <coughs> Hardware issues like insufficient memory of the EV3 as well as the limited input and output ports. Here we also presented some additional information regarding the system which you can find in the documentation. And now I would like to talk about user requirements. Based on the minutes of the last meeting, we have derived two requirements within the initiation stage. The first is that the operator may move the robot to its initial starting position and the second requirement is that the robot has to be aware of its location at all times. With regards to map requirements, the operator has to be able to determine as a no-go zone. Also, the robot should be able to find features of the mock-up map, distinguish areas that are already explored and connect the colored circles within a straight line. Other things to note will be the distance between the four circles and the base station as well as mapping of survey area in real time saving and loading of maps as well. We understand that the format of the map shall be in XML. For the operator, he or she should be able to control the robot, be able to toggle between manual and autonomous mode, and to ensure that the robot safety is the top priority.
In this slide, we will share about the system requirements. In summary, communication between the robot and operator is done wirelessly. Previously, safe maps can be loaded into the system. Operator can control the robot with mouse click buttons. Speeds, speed of the robot can be adjusted and the robot should ensure its own safety by detecting obstacles that it may encounter. The robot should be able to return to base when the job is done. The graphic user interface should display detailed information of the robot. The robot should be able to detect obstacles and update the system. The robot should be able to detect colored circles as well as to inform operator when an unsafe command is given. The robot lastly must be able to determine its location independently at any point of time. These are the summary of the system requirements. For the next slide, I will talk about external interface requirements. These are the features that were provided with the graphical user interface. As requested, the operator will be able to load and save maps, as well as to add or remove no-go zones. Here are some of the controls available. Also do note that up-to-date information of EB3 is provided at all times. The non-functional requirements to be met are as follows. For performance requirements, it will be based on connectivity strength of the wireless connection. Safety requirements will be fulfilled by ensuring that the robot can detect obstacles and not notify operator of dangerous commands. I will finally like to pay attention to the last point of the non-functional non requirements. White box and black box testing strategies will be adopted as well as strict unique testing strategies to uphold the stakeholders' confidence. With that, I shall end my presentation. Thank you.